All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where there are numerous exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. And every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice and complete. And we break it down for you into four different sections. So today we are going to be working in the May warmups section. At the top here is a video that tells you what's going on that month in Craig's world. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz for you to test your knowledge on what you just learned in the video. And further down are all of the exercises within this section. So today we are going to practice recording sales summary from Slice, which is the POS or point of sale system. You will need to be in the sample company. This is where we always work. If you are not sure how to get into the sample company or how to get your own free QBOA account, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. So our scenario today is that Craig tells you that since he didn't use all the plants he bought for jobs, he sold quite a few at a local farmer's market and collected the money using a point of sale or POS system called Slice. Since it does not integrate with QBO, he provided you with his sales summary for last month, and you'll need to enter that data. So we're going to see how to record this. You will need a copy of this sales summary, which can be found under the animated video in the warm-ups section. So let's go ahead and grab that first. Um, back here in the gym under the warm-ups video, uh, you will see this button that says Slice Sales Summary. Go ahead and click on that so it is down downloaded and you will see it right here. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is create a clearing account. A clearing account is a temporary holding place that is used to collect funds that will later be transferred elsewhere. In the case of Slice and many other POS systems and third-party payment processors, Slice will collect the funds from the sale and then distribute them to the business owner minus a transaction fee, usually the next business day. Um, it could be delayed, of course, over a weekend or a holiday. So let's get started getting this set up. The first thing we want to do is click on Account and Tools and then select Chart of Accounts. So here we are in the sample company. This is the dashboard. Up here at the top, you will see accountant tools. Go ahead and click on that. And then under quick links, click on chart of accounts. And you will see this up here. We need to create a new one. So we need to click on the green new button, which is over here. Go ahead and click on that green new button and this uh, will appear for us. And now we need to fill out the account information on the form. For the account type, we're going to call this um, banks, even though it is not an actual bank account, it is a clearing or holding account. Click on banks. In the save account under field, we're going to select bank accounts. Again, this is just a clearing account. So click on bank accounts. And then for the tax form section, we are going to select checking, even though it is not an actual checking account. Um, again, this is just a holding. This is just a temporary holding place when we are putting our transactions. Later, it will be transferred somewhere else. In the account name field, we are going to enter a slice clearing account, and then we are going to save it. So account name, slice clearing account. Okay, type it in there, and then you're going to click on the green Save button. And now we have created that account. But since we are going to be using sales receipts to record the sales collected by Slice, we need to create a product and service item for each line of the following lines of the sales summary, which is one for check or cash check sales, one for credit card sales, and then one for the Slice fees. So let's get started on this. The first thing we're going to do is create a product um, to collect the total cash and check sales. 
You will note that check or that slice already has the details of the specific plants that Craig sold, so we don't have to go down to this level of detail, just an overall cash check sales. So to get this started, we need to click on the gear icon and then click on products and services. So up here is the gear icon. And then under lists, you're going to select product, products and services. And this is what will appear. These are the current products and services listed down here, but we need to create a new one. So we need to click on the green new button. So click on that button right here and this will appear. Um, now this is not something that we are tracking, so it's not inventory, but we need to have this as a, so we need to select this as a non-inventory um, product. So click on that. And then we're going to begin filling it out. So in the name field, we are going to enter slice cash slash check sales. So in the name here, click into it and type in slice cash slash check sales. In the category field, we are going to select slice and then add slice because it is something that's new. So in the category, click into it and type in slice. There is not one there already, so we're going to add this category. And then we're gonna click on the green save button. So now that category slice has been added. And then in the income account field, we are going to select sales of product income because that's what it is. So here that income account, go ahead and type in sales and you'll see sales of product income. And then we are going to go ahead and just click on the green save and close button here. And now that product has been um, added. We're gonna create the product. Um, it's used loosely, that's just like the type, uh, that's just the terminology that QBO uses, even though it's not a physical product. That's what we, uh, QBO uses as their language. So that is what we're referring to here when we say creating a product. Um, we need to create one to collect the total credit card sales now. Again, since say a Slice already has the details of the specific plants that Craig has sold, we do not need to track it at that level of detail. We just need to create one for the overall credit card sales. Since this is account is nearly identical to what we did for the cash and check account just created, we can just simply duplicate it. So to do it, we need to uh, scroll down on the list to find the newly created slice cash check sales product, and then um, click on the arrow next to the edit button and select duplicate. So let's scroll down until we find it. Um, for me, it is at the very bottom here. Since the category is slice, it's going in alphabetical order, uh, sort of. Uh, so um, it's the one new only one that you just added at the very bottom here. Don't click on edit, but click on the arrow next to it and select duplicate. And now a new form will pop up. You know this is a new one because it says copy. We need to change the name of it to slice credit card sales, and then we can go ahead and save and close this one. So I'm going to change this to credit, oop, not create, credit card, and then I'm going to delete this copy and dash. And now everything is the same. We are good here. Go ahead and just click on the green save and close button. And now you can see that it has been added as another line here. The last thing that we need to do is create one for the slice fees account. So we are going to, again, do duplicate the slice cash check sales product and um, fill that one out. So over here, here's that slice check um, cash check sales on the arrow. Click on that again and click on duplicate. And now for the name here, we are going to name it slice fees. So go ahead and change that to just slice fees. 
We are going to be leaving the um, income account. Um, we are going to, I'm sorry, we're going to be changing it to the commissions and fees. And just keep in mind that even though it is a uh, slice charging a fee, so it's money out for us, we still use the income account field um, to enter this account. So we're gonna change the income account field to commissions and fees. So it's uh, uh, click into it and then start typing in commissions and you will see that expense account appears for us. Click on that. And then a note here that QBO recognizes that this account may have special sales tax considerations. We are not going to be dealing with sales tax at this time in this exercise. So you're just going to go ahead and I go ahead and click confirm to accept their suggestion and then we're going to go ahead and save and close this. So here, um, down here, the sales tax, they are just asking us, suggesting it for us, go ahead and click on go the green confirm and then save and close as well. And now all three of those accounts, those products have been created. So now that they're up and running, we need to create the sales receipt to record all of Craig's Farmers Market sales. We're going to need to create two different sales receipts, one for the cash that will go into the undeposited funds, and then one for the credit card sales, which goes into that clearing account that we had created earlier. So we're gonna start with the cash sales. You're gonna click on the plus new button in the left nav bar and select sales receipt. So over here, here's the left nav bar. Here is that plus new button, click on that. Under customers, go ahead and click on sales receipt. And this will appear. Um, keep in mind that a sales receipt means that it is um, when money is being changed hands um, immediately at the transaction. That's what a sales receipt is for versus an invoice where you send out um, a, a bill basically or telling them that they need to pay at a later date. Um, so that's why we are using the sales receipt because these transactions were paid at the time of the transaction. So Craig does not need to keep track of all of the individual customer names uh, for his sales at this uh, farmer's market, and that is because it is already available in Slice. We just need to create a general Slice sales customer. Um, in a real-life scenario, you could always use this customer as uh, for all future Slice sales records. Um, so in the customer field, we need to create this customer slice sales. So let's start typing that in. Click into the customer box, type in slice sales. Um, and then since we don't have that as a current customer, you're going to click on the plus add new. And this customer record will appear. Since we don't have anything, um, any other kind of information other than just creating this general customer, um, we don't have anything that we need to track. So you're just going to go ahead and click and save, which is the green button here. Um, if you happen to be creating a new customer, as an aside from this exercise, if you're ever creating a new customer and you have a lot of detail, their address, contact information, phone, email, anything like that, it's always a good idea to add it to that customer card. But for this exercise, since it is just a blanket, um, a blanket customer for um, the slice sales, we're just leaving it very, um, very generic, only having that customer name. Now we need to complete the sales receipt. So in the sales receipt date, we will use the date that is indicated on the sales summary. In our case, it is the last day of the last month. So if we go here, um, it says this period is last month. So we will just enter here um, for the sales date. We're going to enter the last date of the last month. So for me, that's going to be July 31st. Obviously for you, it'll be different than based on when you are doing this exercise and watching this video. Um, the next thing is that in the payment method field, we need to have cash selected since that is what is um, collected here. Um, and you can use the cash. This is for cash and check. So it's okay to use cash here because it is going to be deposited into this undeposited funds, which is just a holding account until it is actually deposited at the bank. So that is good right there. In the product service line, we are going to be putting, um, selecting slice cash slash check sales 
really hard for me to say things. Um, here, you're gonna go click into it. Um, go ahead and start typing slice. And this is the one for the cash and check sales. You can see here, it says product and service. That is why we created a quote unquote product of this slice check um, cash and check sales and the credit card sales, because that is the terminology that I was mentioning before that QBO uses. So that is why um, we created a product for it because it would go in this uh, box right here. The amount we are going to have it selected, uh, we are going to type in 620, 625, um, because as you can see here in the payments under the cash, it is $625. So that is what we need to add here under the amount. So 625. Um, if you tab over, you will see that it is now being um, added here in QBO. Um, it says 675 because currently it is trying to add tax to it. We are go not working with that in this exercise, so you can go ahead and uncheck that tax box. Um, in real life, you may need to have this actually checked, but for today, for this exercise, we're just going to uncheck it. So we have that done, and now we are going to just click on the black save button, which is right here. Click on that black save button. And now that sales receipt has been saved for us. And now since the two sales receipts are very similar, all we're gonna do is just make a copy of the current one that we just saved and edit it. So we're gonna click on the more button in the black bar and then select copy. So that is down here, click on more, and then click on copy. And you will see that it says that this is a copy. Um, and so that's how we know that it has duplicated it for us. We are going to delete the payment method. Um, note that we already know that this is credit card sales and we do not need to track the individual type of card. Um, Slice has already done that for this. So we're just going to delete that payment method. Um, which currently says cash, just delete it. You do not need to change to a certain credit card because again, that's a level of detail that is in the slice um, POS system and not something for right here. So just leave that blank. In the deposit to account, we're going to select that slice clearing account. So click into this and you can see right here at the top, it says slice clearing account, go ahead and click on that. We're going to change the product service now to the Slice credit card sales. So click into this. You can click it twice. You can start typing it in, but I happen to see that it is right here. So I'm going to click on it there. In the uh, amount, we are going to change it to 125 because that is what it says right here, 125. Um, so in the amounts, I'm changing it, or I'm going to type in 125, tab over, and it is showing here. Um, on the second line of the product and service, we're going to put in the slice fees because that is here, down this way. And those fees are specific to the credit card, so that is why we are adding it to this sales receipt and not the last one. So if you click into it twice and you start typing in slice, you will see fees here, slice fees, click on that. And then we are going to be putting in a negative 188. And that is because 125 was collected, but the fees from that are $1.88. So we need to remove that from the sales receipt. So here in the amount, you're going to put uh, minus $1.88 tab it over and it has um, pulled out for us. And then we are going to uncheck both of the tax boxes for this exercises. It's for this exercise only um, because we're not going to be dealing with sales tax, but in a real life scenario, you may need to have those tax boxes checked. Um, so we're going to uncheck those for right now. Uncheck this one and this one. Uh, there we go. It is unchecked now. Um, I had it checked before. That's because I copied it. That's why it was already checked. So just make sure that both of them are unchecked. You should have a total of $123.12 because that is the $125 minus the $1.88. And then we are just going to go ahead and save and close. So click on the arrow down here. And then um, on the save and close, click on that. 
and both of those sales receipts have now been saved. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO Gym, just go ahead and click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in this section where we practice recording the transfer from Slice. And I will see you in the next video.